The Deliverance is a new horror film now streaming on Netflix. This chilling movie promises to keep you on the edge of your seat with its spine-tingling narrative and eerie atmosphere. The movie tells the story of the Jackson family, an ordinary family who find themselves in extraordinary circumstances. Their peaceful life is turned upside down by a series of inexplicable and terrifying events. They face a terrifying demonic presence in their Pittsburgh home. The once safe and loving environment becomes a battleground for their very souls as they struggle to understand and combat the malevolent force that has invaded their lives. This film, directed by me, Lee Daniels, takes inspiration from a real-life haunting. My goal was to capture the raw fear and emotional turmoil experienced by those who have faced such unexplainable horrors. The Ammons family in Gary, Indiana, endured a terrifying ordeal in 2011. Their story, filled with documented instances of supernatural occurrences, serves as the foundation for The Deliverance. Their story forms the foundation of The Deliverance. The film delves deep into the psychological and emotional impact of living in a house plagued by demonic forces. This film explores the darkness of demonic possession. It examines how such an evil presence can tear apart the fabric of a family testing their faith and resilience. We see this horror through the eyes of an African-American woman, adding a unique and powerful perspective to the narrative. Her journey is one of courage and determination as she fights to protect her loved ones. The Deliverance is a faith-based thriller. It not only aims to scare, but also to inspire showing the strength of the human spirit in the face of unimaginable evil. It grapples with the power of belief in the face of unimaginable evil. The film underscores the importance of faith and the enduring power of hope, even in the darkest of times. In 2011, Latoya Ammons and her family moved into a rental home. The house was on Carolina Street in Gary, Indiana. They hoped for a fresh start. Instead, they found themselves living a nightmare. Strange and unsettling events began to plague the family. Latoya believed that she and her three children were targeted by demonic forces. The Indianapolis Star investigated the Ammons haunting. Their 2014 report revealed chilling details. I shared my experiences. I allowed access to medical, psychological, and official records. These documents corroborated my claims. The Ammons family's story is one of terror and survival. The disturbances began subtly. In December 2011, swarms of black flies infested the Ammons screened-in porch. This was highly unusual, especially during the winter. The situation escalated quickly. Latoya reported increasingly disturbing incidents. My children, aged 7, 9, and 12, began to exhibit bizarre behavior. They would levitate. They were thrown across rooms by unseen forces. The children spoke in unnaturally deep voices. The events were witnessed by others. Local authorities, including the Gary Police Department, became involved. Medical professionals and social workers also reported witnessing these strange occurrences. The Ammons haunting was becoming impossible to ignore. The Ammons family's claims were met with a mix of belief and skepticism. Some found their story credible, given the numerous witnesses. Others attributed the events to mental health issues. They suggested that Latoya might be influencing her children's behavior. In April 2012, an anonymous report was filed with the Indiana Department of Child Services. The report raised concerns about potential child abuse or neglect. DCS intervened, taking emergency custody of the children. Psychological evaluations of the children were conducted. These evaluations suggested that their accounts of the events were inconsistent. This fueled further skepticism about the demonic possession claims. 
With the situation growing more dire, Reverend Michael Maginot, a priest from a nearby parish, stepped in. The family had been experiencing increasingly disturbing events, and it was clear that they needed more than just prayers. Reverend Maginot, known for his dedication and experience in dealing with such matters, felt compelled to help Latoya Ammons and her children. I performed three exorcisms on Latoya Ammons at my church in June 2012. Each session was intense and challenging, but I was determined to help her find peace. The rituals were conducted with utmost care following the ancient rites of the church, and each time we could feel the presence of something dark and malevolent. I also blessed her new home in Indianapolis. It was crucial to ensure that the new environment was free from any lingering negative energies. The blessing was a significant step in helping Latoya and her family start anew, away from the horrors they had faced. Latoya and her children moved there after regaining custody in November 2012. The move marked a new beginning for the family, a chance to rebuild their lives in a safer, more positive environment. The community welcomed them with open arms, offering support and understanding. The Carolina Street House, now infamous as the Demon House, remained vacant. Its eerie reputation grew, and it became a symbol of the terrifying events that had unfolded within its walls. Neighbours and passers-by would often avoid the house, fearing the dark history it held. It was finally demolished in 2016. The decision to tear down the house was made to put an end to its sinister legacy. The demolition was a relief to many, as it symbolized the eradication of the evil that had once resided there. This demolition occurred during the filming of Zach Bagans' documentary, Demon House. The documentary aimed to uncover the truth behind the haunting and brought renewed attention to the Ammons family's ordeal. The film crew captured the final moments of the house, ensuring that its story would not be forgotten. The Ammons family story, though terrifying, offered a glimmer of hope. Their resilience and determination to overcome the darkness that had plagued them were inspiring. They showed that even in the face of unimaginable fear, it is possible to find strength and move forward. Despite their ordeal, they found a way to move forward. The support of their community, the blessings of Reverend Maginot, and their own inner strength helped them rebuild their lives. Today, they continue to live with hope and courage, a testament to the power of faith and family. Section 6. The Aftermath. A house demolished. A family changed. The Ammons family's experience left an indelible mark on them. The haunting forced them to confront unimaginable darkness. It also tested their faith and resilience. The demolition of the Demon House served as a symbolic end to their ordeal. The Ammons family story continues to fascinate and horrify. It serves as a chilling reminder that some things cannot be easily explained. Their experience raises questions about the nature of reality, the power of belief, and the existence of evil. Section 7. The Deliverance, a Cinematic Interpretation The Deliverance draws inspiration from the Ammons case. However, like many horror films based on true events, it takes creative liberties. The film is my interpretation of their story. I wanted to explore the themes of faith and reliance on a higher power. Fear in this film becomes a catalyst for spiritual connection. The Deliverance is a fictionalized reimagining of the Ammons case. It's designed to make audiences reflect on faith and resilience. These themes are at the heart of the human experience. Section 8. Creative Liberties. Shifting the Narrative. In this section, we delve into the creative decisions that shape the narrative of a film particularly when adapting real-life events or stories. Filmmakers often take liberties to enhance the story's impact, making it more engaging and thought-provoking for the audience. In adapting the Ammons case for the screen, I made deliberate changes. 
These changes were not made lightly but were carefully considered to serve the story better and to resonate more deeply with the audience. I chose to portray the protagonist's mother as white, 